Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh! The book is called Growing Up Fisher, Musings, Memoirs, and Misadventures by Miss Jolie Fisher. I'm so happy to have her back on my show. The book is so incredible, you guys. I promise you, it's like the spiritual royal family journey that is uh, so touching and inspiring. And Jolie, I'm so happy for you. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. How are you? I'm so good. I wish you were right here next to me. I this is know. as good as it's going to get. I got I to gotta take what I got. You know what? I'm. <laughs> I, we've got a great book buying audience. So for those that missed your interview last time, they're going to pick it up this time. Okay. The book is so good. I was so proud of you when I read it. I got to read it as a manuscript and uh, like one of the first because I, I was I'm friends with her. <laughs> and uh, I was I called you up. I was just like, I'm blown away. Your writing is just like poetry oh, so good. thank you yeah it's been like an interesting year it's actually a year today where I was walking in the building that the book came out and sort of what happens to you when you are as as candid and sort of authentic as you can be and then sort of to feel the the repercussions of it not necessarily negative but like just what people feel about it has been a really incredible journey and um and it's mostly been fantastic and now I'm bringing it to the stage which is um, really magic for me. As you know, that's my favorite place to be. Of course, you belong there. You grew um, up looking at your mom. I still have that image of you, the way you wrote it in the book, like yeah. sitting off stage and watching your mom And perform. saying, I've got to get me some of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was no what, way. What was some of the feedback? What are you talking, like, tell me this year, this past year, what are you hearing from um, people? You know, it was it, just what you're saying is that, wow, we didn't know that you wrote. Then some people, you know, uh, oh, uh, you're a singer? I didn't know. I'm like, where have you been? Under a rock? I mean, this right. is like what my thing for for three decades um I've always been a storyteller I've always um written things but never really it just this poured out of me into you know a couple hundred pages of uh of um treasures of moments in my life and like somebody told me there's no new material in a memoir so the stories have been mine and I've and I've crafted them and curated them my whole life and now they're on the pages of this book and I'm really proud of it you know, when I wrote uh, my books, my sisters would call me and say, what family were you in? Because <laughs> their perception of their childhood was completely different than mine. Yeah. We had the same family, but we saw things differently. Well, Did you get that I at all? I think that we are, you know, cellularly, you know, obviously different people. I think my sister Trisha Lee and I are... Are very um, are, are very alike in the things that we that we want and the things that are important to us and and our children and the way. But we did get different things from Connie Stevens from our mom, and we certainly got um, you know morsels of things from Eddie Fisher. But we uh, but because they're different people and we were different human beings, we we do have a different story. Um, so so I don't know necessarily that she would say what family are you from, but her view of how how we were treated and how we were, um, you know, uh, who got more than this of that or, and I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about emotional support or, right. you know, it's an interesting thing when also now as a mother of five people, like your children come to you at different points in your life at different kind times in a marriage or a partnership, a child comes and it's what you're willing to give up. Um, yep. And what you're willing, like what pieces of you you're willing to give. And and in my book, I think is a, is kind of got a lot of woman power, mom power kind of st stuff in it too, about how to be the daughter of this, you know, iconic, incandescent, sexy human being Beauty. who's now 80 years old, who's had a, a lifetime in show business and what she gave me, how do I impart the wisdom of being female in in this world to to my children and so that was i'm i'm happy with the way that i that i portrayed the way that our lifestyle is and all that it, sort of it's so well done um you you know your dad uh, your mom was of course a single mom so many times we repeat the same patterns of our parents how have you managed because you've been married to chris for how long 22 years 22 years yes. it's how really working out well now because he works out of town <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, we, I, you know, it is, it's funny. I mean, my mom's, my mom even said to me, we, I just started this tour and she went with me to London and she's, you know, mm. she's like a fighter and she's not been well um, in the past couple of years, but she was like, I'm going with you and sat in the audience every night and we were sitting at a table and she was like, 22 years, can you believe it? She goes, I'll never see that with anyone. And I'm like, well, now you won't. But in the, tr- in the truth is she didn't have that in her to to stay and um, and fight and make things work and certainly my father did not um, I mean I think no. they liked the they liked the the idea of marriage the institution of it but they just didn't quite understand how to you know plus you know is there a part of you looking at your mom going you know what I'm I'm I, I love myself too much to stay with an addict that that it gave you that kind of sensibility or that self-worth to go hey if my mom knew that she deserved better so do I yeah I mean I think that we um I, I don't know I mean I think I even wrote this verbatim in the book that I believe that marriage was invented when you were like you know in olden days when people were married off at like 15 or 16 until death to us part was like 10 good years and then you were dead like you didn't survive as long as you do now. Right. So now that we are staying alive longer, thank goodness, um, it is you have to find ways to um, to change, you know, to roll with the punches and to say, you know, you're you're doing different things, but I'm going to adapt to that. And um, and certainly, I think my mom was a survi- is a survivor and was a survivor of. Um, b- bad relationships, but I think that you do pay a price, and that she's not she's alone now. You know, right. I think that that is that's also something is like you have to say, do I want to grow old with this person? Um, can we still be playful? Can we still uh, right. co-parent? Can we still like he has this great job? He's shooting a television show in Atlanta, and he looked at me and he was like, "What do you think? I'm going to go work out of town." And I was like, "You know what? Go. It's your turn. Go." do it right and then of course we both now are out of town. <laughs> well, los angeles is on fire um, i mean i know god Ugh, what yeah. a rat, what a mess yeah but you know like i mean with with marriages i can't even imagine because 20 years ago and you've known me very long yes 20 years yeah. i am not the same person at all no like it, it's like invasion of the body snatchers from the person <laughs> i am right now so i mean how i can't even imagine having the person I'm with or the or being with the person that you were with <laughs> yeah thank you yeah as <laughs> you know that too I but, mean you have to evolve together yes yes and oh and by the way when I told my mom that I was coming to see you she said hi and she goes she seems really happy oh so she sent her love <laughs> tell her I said hello and that I am very happy but you Good. know that I've paid my dues yes, yes. god Damn, if I paid him. <laughs> what if, what did you want people to get out of this book so they buy it? I want them to to identify with me. I want them to say she's kind of like me. Um, I want them to feel like I am um, part of this crazy dynasty, Hollywood, whatever royal blood that I have in me, but that we are all human beings and that we have similar stories to tell. Mine just have little twists and turns and are, you know, that I'm showing you the good, the bad and the ugly, that I too am a survivor of, um, of going through life of you know of working and being a working mom and um like i said having these children all come to me at different points in my life um i want people to laugh i want them to know about these magical jobs that i've had opposite ellen degeneres and brad garrett and being on broadway and all that and what um and that that i don't take it with a grain of salt that all of those things were fought for and that they all moved me in such incredible ways that i feel blessed to you know it sounds corny but I mean as long as people will let me grace a a stage or a screen I am I'm a happy girl well Sal I'm gonna plug the book so people get it growing up Fisher musings memories and misadventures and look at how pretty it is in in the new paperback it's a a pop of color it is I like that pop of color (laughs) it's my favorite they were like it's Tiffany blue and I was like yes perfect it is I love it Put a bow on it. Yeah. Um, so w- looking back in hindsight at your career, which job changed you? 
I mean, I think they all, um, I think they all change you in some way. Like I always say, um, you know, I had the same tits and the same hair in all those <laughs> roles, but everything else was different. Like I love to change. I love to crawl into someone else's skin. And, um, you know, certainly as far as exposure, um, I worked with James Brooks, James L. Brooks, wow. um, in a movie that my mom said, oh, she gets to play with the big kids now, which was Nick Nolte and... Um, and Tracy Ullman and Jolie Richardson, and it was like a small role, but it was sparkly. And then the movie flopped. But it was a moment in time where I was like, I'm playing with the big hits, like she said. Right. Um, Ellen DeGeneres, um, I got a job opposite her, and you know we were part of history making TV. So I was Absolutely. like, I was like, okay, this is it. This is it. My career is made. And then you know, darkness happens, and things change, and you put on weight, or you become someone. I don't know. Whatever those things are that happen. Um, Inspector Gadget was pretty. A fabulous job. Absolutely. Uh, I was like, you know, the Disney girl for a, for that brief and shining moment. Um, certainly my cabaret and Grease on Broadway, amazing experiences. Um, Brad Garrett opposite him was a delicious, I mean, he's a filthy, dirty, rotten, big, giant person and we had the time of our lives but it was one of those shows where it never really found people until after it was off the air so people are like oh my god till death was my favorite show when i could find it or it i so found good. it in syndication or whatever um i've just started directing and it's um really sort of like you know like putting on like a really warm amazing comfortable worn in leather jacket like i put it on and i'm like Ooh, I'm a director. Like I'm a director. I really am and I think my my directing career will possibly outshine what I've done so far. And um see what happens when you're multi-talented? Yeah. You you persevere. And I and I and I'm doing this little kind of magical show right now called Growing Up Fisher: Music Memories and Misadventures. And I've chosen all my favorite songs over the years, standards, Broadway stuff, weird kind of '70s grooves, and contemporary songs. And I've woven them with stories from the book. So I'm doing oh that. God, at 50, where where can people see that? I'm doing it this week at 54 Below here in New York. I'm doing Vegas. And um, Myron's Cabaret Jazz at the Smith Center. I am doing Palm Springs, the Purple Room. And then I'm closing at the Wallace Annenberg in Los Angeles. Look at you, Jolie. Yeah. I'm so happy for you and proud of you. Thank I mean, it doesn't you. surprise me whatsoever that we'd be sitting here and you talking about all these things that you've been able to do and Thank still you. do. Thank you. You know, in Hollywood. Remember when we were all washed up at like 39 in Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> we're still <Kind> going. <laughs> Somewhat still going. Yeah. Thanks to Botox. I want to, um, <laughs> because we love to talk about our celebrities, what is something, because um, I love Ellen. I have played poker with her for like two years. I, played I would pl- I would her. play poker with her, but we'd go over to her house and like lose eight hundred dollars. That's right. <laughs> she she was so rich that she'd go all in every time. And I'm like, bitch, I can't play with you. Like you're impossible. And she was tough. Like she was a competitor. Oh yeah. Like she went. She wasn't. She was for real. Yeah. She will fuck you up. <laughs> Sorry. I think your daughter's there. Um. So what is something about her that people don't know? About Ellen? Yeah. I think we. I think she's pretty open about who she is. I would say she's. Uh, but we've seen this of late. She's very sensitive. She's a sensitive person, I, and she's and she's moved by um, by underserved people and by by animals and all that sort of thing. And I think um, I, I don't think there's anything that we don't know. I mean, I think do, do we know she enjoys a tequila? I don't know. <laughs> Her birthday I, party was epic, by the way. It was like crazy. Oh, I'm sure it was. I'm sure. I was like, can we do this every month? And she was like, absolutely not. Um, how is how is your mom doing? You said she's not feeling too good, but is she okay? She's okay. She had a stroke two years ago. Oh, and shit. she's um her maneuverability is a little less than than she would like. But um but she's a fighter, man. I don't she she went to London, you know, she made that trip and she really wanted to go to Harrods and, you know, <laughs> go shopping of course. and eat fabulous food. And she's like, When am I gonna do this again? And I was like, Okay, simmer down, lady, you can go. <laughs> 
God, she's such she's such an icon. I love her. And um, I know you do talk about, of course, your sister Carrie in the book a lot. Have there ever been, because I'm one of those people that have mediums and go to psychic mediums whenever I lose a loved one. Have you tried to do that yet? I have. I had some, um, I've had some amazing experience where she's in the room with me, more, for sure. She I'm told stimming. me, actually, she told me um, it, it, very early on. I don't know that I say who I was with, though. I think I'm not supposed to say who I was with. But she said to um, watch for um, her daughter to, you know, make sure that she was going to be okay. And she also said, you know, I was a good mother. I didn't make the sandwiches because Mm -hmm. I always talk about how I would make three different lunches and I would cut the crust off this one and she had braces. And so she wanted the apples in little pieces and she likes a bagel. and, And I make a joke about like, no matter what happened, if I had a bottle of Cabernet and an Ambien the night before, I'll still make lunch the next day. And my sister Carrie said to me, through a medium I didn't make the sandwiches but I was a good mother and I was like what I chills all over my body yeah, right now yeah for sure and Debbie you- came through as well her okay. mom who said um I I I, I want to come and talk to the girls but I need my hair first. And Debbie wore wigs, and we all know that she wore wigs. Right. She said, I need to put my face and my hair on. So she was being um, vain in the afterlife. Right, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Did you feel a sense of comfort, though? Like, I usually get leave there feeling... Oh, like for sure. Of- uh, I had a, I, you know, remember the celebrity um, ghost stories or of the haunting of? Well, yeah. we lived in a house in Homeby Hills on Delfern Drive for 44 years. We had this house. And so we went around with the medium all over the house. I was with my mom. And my mom had a little kind of a crazy experience with her father and she was she she was uncomfortable with it and she went to go sit down. And the woman came over to me, Kim Russo, and she said, Um, I didn't know if you wanted me to tell you, but your father came through and I was like, Well, I don't have anything unsaid with my father and what what did he say? And and she said, He um do you have a tattoo? And I was like, Well, I have a lot of tattoos. I was defensive, I don't know why. <laughs> Right. And I, she goes, no, no, no. He said that you got a tattoo recently and that he said, thank you for including him. And I had my sleeves. I'm going to show you, but my sleeves were, ro- she couldn't see, but I had just gotten this tattoo that oh, says shit. family in seven languages. And I said to the tattoo artist, Allison Casson, I said, hey, let's look up how to say family in Hebrew or Yiddish. And it's mishpuka, and it's written backwards. And we looked at all these different fonts, and we put it right there. And I said, "I bet my dad is watching." Oh! And my she came God. up to me and she said, "Your dad said thank you for including him in the tattoo. He watched you get it." I mean, come on, that's not something you can Google. No, it's not something. And I've chills all over my body, and I so believe that. So good, you you have some great guardian angels at your side. I do, I do. I'm so happy for you, Jolie Fisher. You guys, check out her book. Pick it up now, Growing Up Fisher. And then you, she also has her stage show. So if you're in New York, go to... 54 Below. This weekend. Thursday and Friday. Yeah. And then if they want to see where else you are, where, where can they go? Um, on their Facebook, website. Jolie Fisher Official. There you go. Or Twitter, Ms. Jolie Fisher. Send my love to your family, will you? I will. I True. Love you, Jolie. Come run over here. Run over here. Quick. Let me see quick, that quick, cute quick. little face. Come here. We're going to we're gonna wind up taking a picture anyways together. Okay. Oh my God! Look at it! I made this. Oh my God! She's beautiful. Of course she is. (laughs) We'll be right back. Let's take a picture, you guys. Oh my God! She's so cute. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh. 